UK driving theory test practice. Topic. 12 incidents, accidents and emergencies question 1 of 58. You see a car on the hard shoulder of a motorway with a help pennant displayed. What does this mean? The driver is a foreign visitor. The driver is a rescue patrol officer. The driver is likely to be a disabled person. The driver is first aid trained. The correct answer is, the driver is likely to be a disabled person. Explanation. If a disabled driver's vehicle breaks down and they're unable to walk to an emergency phone, they're advised to stay in their car and switch on the hazard warning lights. They may also display a help pennant in their vehicle. Question 2 of 58. When should you use hazard warning lights? When you leave your car at the roadside to visit a shop. When you slow down quickly on a motorway because of a hazard ahead. When you wish to stop on double yellow lines. When you need to park on the pavement. The correct answer is, when you slow down quickly on a motorway because of a hazard ahead. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are fitted to all modern cars and some motorcycles. They should be used to warn other road users when your vehicle is causing a temporary obstruction, for example, after a collision or when it's broken down. Following drivers on a motorway of a hazard or obstruction ahead, they shouldn't be used as an excuse for dangerous or illegal parking. Question 3 of 58. When are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? When traveling slowly because you're lost? When parked on double yellow lines to visit a shop? When stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic? When traveling during darkness without headlights? The correct answer is... When stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic? Explanation. You mustn't use hazard warning lights while moving except to warn traffic behind when you slow suddenly on a motorway or unrestricted dual carriageway. Never use hazard warning lights to excuse dangerous or illegal parking. Question 4 of 58. You're going through a congested tunnel and have to stop. What should you do? Keep the safe distance from the vehicle in front. Pull up very close to the vehicle in front to save space. Make a U-turn and find another route. Ignore any message signs as they're never up to date. The correct answer is, keep the safe distance from the vehicle in front. Explanation. It's important to keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front at all times. This still applies in congested tunnels, even if you're moving very slowly or have stopped. If the vehicle in front breaks down, you may need room to maneuver past it. Question 5 of 58 on a motorway. When should the hard shoulder be used? When taking a short rest? When checking a road map? When an emergency arises? When answering a mobile phone? The correct answer is, when an emergency arises. Explanation. The hard shoulder should only be used in a genuine emergency. If possible, and if it's safe, use a roadside telephone to call for help. This will give your exact location to the operator. Never cross the carriageway or a slip road to use a telephone on the other side of the road. Question 6 of 58. You arrive at the scene of a crash. Someone is bleeding badly from an arm wound. Nothing is embedded in it. What should you do? Apply pressure over the wound and keep the arm down. Get them a drink. Apply pressure over the wound and raise the arm. Dab the wound. The correct answer is, apply pressure over the wound and raise the arm. Explanation. If possible, lay the casualty down. Check for anything that may be in the wound. Apply firm pressure to the wound using clean material, without pressing on anything that might be in it. Raising the arm above the level of the heart will also help to stem the flow of blood. Question 7 of 58 at an incident, a casualty is unconscious. You need to check whether they're breathing. How long should you allow for this check? At least one minute, at least two seconds, at least two minutes.
at least 10 seconds. The correct answer is, at least 10 seconds. Explanation, once the casualties airway is open, listen and feel the breath. Do this by placing your cheek over their mouth and nose and look to see if their chest rises. This should be done for up to 10 seconds. If you cannot detect any breathing, you should begin compressions. Question 8 of 58. Following a collision, someone has suffered a burn. The burn needs to be cooled. What's the shortest time it should be cooled for? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. The correct answer is 10 minutes. Explanation. Check the casualty for shock and, if possible, try to cool the burn for at least 10 minutes. Use a clean, cool, non-toxic liquid, preferably water. Question 9 of 58. A casualty isn't breathing normally. Chest compressions should be given. At what rate? 120 per minutes. 240 per minutes. 60 per minutes. 10 per minutes. The correct answer is 120 per minutes. Explanation. If a casualty isn't breathing normally, chest compressions may be needed to maintain circulation. Place two hands on the center of the chest and press down hard and fast around 5 to 6 centimeters in about twice a second. Question 10 of 58. A person has been injured. They may be suffering from shock. What are the warning signs to look for? Warm dry skin, pale gray skin, slow pulse, flushed complexion. The correct answer is pale gray skin. Explanation. The effects of shock may not be immediately obvious. Warning signs are rapid pulse, sweating, pale gray skin and rapid shallow breathing. Question 11 of 58. An injured person has been placed in the recovery position. They're unconscious but breathing normally. What else should be done? Check their airway remains clear. Give them a hot sweet drink. Place their arms by their side. Press firmly between their shoulders. The correct answer is, check their airway remains clear. Explanation, after a casualty has been placed in the recovery position. Make sure their airway remains open and monitor their condition until medical help arrives. Where possible, don't move a casualty unless there's further danger. Question 12 of 58. An injured motorcyclist is lying unconscious in the road. The traffic has stopped and there's no further danger. What should you do to help? Seek medical assistance. Move the person off the road. Remove their safety helmet. Remove their leather jacket. The correct answer is... Seek medical assistance explanation if someone has been injured. The sooner proper medical attention is given the better. Ask someone to phone for help or do it yourself. An injured person should only be moved if they're in further danger. An injured motorcyclist's helmet shouldn't be removed unless it's essential. Question 13 of 58. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Pull over to the hard shoulder, then remove the box. Stop close to the box until the police arrive. Catch up with the lorry and try to get the driver's attention. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. The correct answer is, go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Explanation. Lorry drivers can be unaware of objects falling from their vehicles. If you see something fall onto a motorway, look to see if the driver pulls over. If they don't stop, don't attempt to retrieve the object yourself. Pull onto the hard shoulder near an emergency telephone and report the hazard. Question 14 of 58. You're going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? Other drivers flashing their lights. Variable message signs. Hazard warning lines, areas with hatch markings. The correct answer is variable message signs. Explanation, follow the instructions given by the signs or by tunnel officials. In congested tunnels, a minor incident can soon turn into a major one with serious or even fatal results. Question 15 of 58. An adult casualty isn't breathing. 
to maintain circulation, compressions should be given. What's the correct depth to press for each compression? 10 to 15 centimeters, 1 to 2 centimeters, 15 to 20 centimeters, 5 to 6 centimeters. The correct answer is 5 to 6 centimeters. Explanation. An adult casualty isn't breathing normally. To maintain circulation, place two hands on the center of the chest. Then press down hard and fast around 5 to 6 centimeters in about twice a second. Question 16 of 58. You're the first to arrive at the scene of a crash. What should you do? Drag all casualties away from the vehicles. Call the emergency services promptly. Flag down other motorists to help you. Leave as soon as another motorist arrives. The correct answer is, call the emergency services promptly. Explanation. At a crash scene you can help in practical ways even if you aren't trained in first aid. Call the emergency services and make sure you don't put yourself or anyone else in danger. The safest way to warn other traffic is by switching on your hazard warning lights. Question 17 of 58. You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all engines are stopped. What else should you do? Make sure that an ambulance is called for. Stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. Try and get people who are injured to drink something. Move the people who are injured clear of their vehicles. The correct answer is, make sure that an ambulance is called for. Explanation. If you're the first to arrive at a crash scene, the first concerns are the risk of further collision and fire. Ensuring that vehicle engines are switched off will reduce the risk of fire. Use hazard warning lights so that other traffic knows there's a need for caution. Make sure the emergency services are contacted. Don't assume this has already been done. Question 18 of 58. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. The rider is injured. When should their helmet be removed? Only when the motorcyclist asks. Always straight away. Only when it's essential. Always. Unless they're in shock. The correct answer is. Only when it's essential. Explanation. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. Remember they may be suffering from shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink, but do reassure them confidently. Question 19 of 58. You arrive at an incident. There's no danger from fire or further collisions. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Check whether they're bleeding. Check whether they have any bruising. Check whether they're breathing. Check whether they have any broken bones. The correct answer is... Check whether they're breathing. Explanation. At the scene of an incident, always be aware of danger from further collisions or fire. The first priority when dealing with an unconscious person is to ensure they can breathe. This may involve clearing their airway if you can see an obstruction or if they're having difficulty breathing. Question 20 of 58. At an incident someone is unconscious. What would your priority be? Wake them up. Check their airway is clear. Find out the name. Make them comfortable. The correct answer is, check their airway is clear. Explanation. Remember this procedure by saying Dr. ABC. This stands for danger, response, airway, breathing, compressions. Give whatever first aid you can and stay with the injured person until the emergency services arrive. Question 21 of 58. You've stopped at an incident to give help. What should you do? Keep injured people on the move by walking them around. Give injured people a warm drink. Keep injured people warm and comfortable. Give injured people something to eat. The correct answer is, keep injured people warm and comfortable. Explanation. There are a number of things you can do to help, even without expert training. Be aware of further danger from other traffic and fire. Make sure the area is safe. People may be in shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Keep them warm and comfortable and reassure them. 
Don't move injured people unless there's a risk of further danger. Question 22 of 58. There's been a collision. A driver is suffering from shock. What should you do? Reassure them. Ask who caused the incident. Offer them a cigarette. Give them a drink. The correct answer is, reassure them explanation. A casualty suffering from shock may have injuries that aren't immediately obvious. Call the emergency services, then stay with the person in shock, offering reassurance until the experts arrive. Question 23 of 58. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. No other vehicle is involved. The rider is unconscious and lying in the middle of the road. What's the first thing you should do at the scene? Warn other traffic. Give the rider reassurance. Clear the road of debris. Move the rider out of the road. The correct answer is, warn other traffic. Explanation. The motorcyclist is in an extremely vulnerable position, exposed to further danger from traffic. Approaching vehicles need advance warning in order to slow down and safely take avoiding action or stop. Don't put yourself or anyone else at risk. Use the hazard warning lights on your vehicle to alert other road users to the danger. Question 24 of 58. At an incident, a small child isn't breathing. To restore normal breathing, how should you breathe into their mouth? Gently, sharply, rapidly, heavily. The correct answer is, gently. Explanation. If a young child has stopped breathing, first check that their airway is clear. Then give compressions to the chest using one hand, two fingers for an infant and begin mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Breathe very gently and continue the procedure until they can breathe without help. Question 25 of 58. That's an incident, a casualty isn't breathing. What should you do while helping them to start breathing again? Roll them onto their side. Put their arms across their chest. Shake them firmly. Tilt their head back gently. The correct answer is, tilt their head back gently. Explanation. It's important to ensure that the airways are clear before you start mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Gently tilt their head back and use your finger to check for and remove any obvious obstruction in the mouth. Question 26 of 58. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. What should you do to help them? Apply lotions to the injury. Burst any blisters. Remove anything sticking to the burns. Douse the burns with clean, cool, non-toxic liquid. The correct answer is, douse the burns with clean, cool, non-toxic liquid. Explanation. Your priority is to cool the burns with a clean, cool, non-toxic liquid, preferably water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 10 minutes. If blisters appear, don't attempt to burst them, as this could lead to infection. Question 27 of 58. You arrive at an incident. A pedestrian is bleeding heavily from a leg wound. The leg isn't broken and there's nothing in the wound. What should you do? Raise the leg to lessen bleeding. Keep both legs flat on the ground. Fetch them a warm drink. Dab the wound to stop bleeding. The correct answer is, raise the leg to lessen bleeding. Explanation. If there's nothing in the wound, applying a pad of clean cloth or bandage will help stem the bleeding. Raising the leg will also lessen the flow of blood. Don't tie anything tightly round the leg, as this will restrict circulation and could result in long-term injury. Question 28 of 58. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? When bystanders will help you. When there's further danger. When bystanders advise you to. When an ambulance is on its way. The correct answer is, when there's further danger. Explanation. Don't move a casualty unless there's further danger, for example, from other traffic or fire. They may have unseen or internal injuries. Moving them unnecessarily could cause further injury. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. Question 29 of 58. At an incident, 
it's important to look after any casualties. What should you do with them when the area is safe? Give them something to eat. Keep them where they are. Move them away from the vehicles. Ask them how it happened. The correct answer is, keep them where they are. Explanation. When the area is safe and there's no danger from other traffic or fire, it's better not to move casualties. Moving them may cause further injury. Question 30 of 58. A tanker is involved in a collision. Which sign shows that it's carrying dangerous goods? The correct answer is... Explanation. There will be an orange label on the side and rear of the tanker. Look at this carefully and report what it says when you phone the emergency services. Details of hazard warning plates are given in the highway code. Question 31 of 58. You're involved in a collision. Afterwards, which document may the police ask you to produce? Vehicle service record. Vehicle registration document. Theory test certificate. Driving license. The correct answer is, driving license. Explanation. You must stop if you've been involved in a collision which results in injury or damage. The police may ask to see your driving license and insurance details at the time or later at a police station. Question 32 of 58. After a collision, someone is unconscious in their vehicle. When should you call the emergency services? As soon as possible, only as a last resort. After you've woken them up. After checking for broken bones. The correct answer is, as soon as possible. Explanation. It's important to make sure that the emergency services arrive as soon as possible. When a person is unconscious, they could have serious injuries that aren't immediately obvious. Question 33 of 58 A casualty has an injured arm. They can move it freely but it's bleeding. Why should you get them to keep it in a raised position? It will help them to be seen more easily. It will ease the pain to stop them touching other people. It will help to reduce the blood flow. The correct answer is, it will help to reduce the blood flow. Explanation. If a casualty is bleeding heavily, the raise the limb to a higher position. This will help to reduce the blood flow. Before raising the limb, you should make sure that it isn't broken. Question 34 of 58. A collision has just happened. An injured person is lying in a busy road. What's the first thing you should do to help? Place them in the recovery position. Warn other traffic. Make sure the injured person is kept warm. Treat the person for shock. The correct answer is, warn other traffic. Explanation. The most immediate danger is further collisions and fire. You could warn other traffic by switching on hazard warning lights, displaying an advance warning triangle or sign, but not on a motorway or by any other means that doesn't put you or others at risk. Question 35 of 58. That's an incident. What should you do with a casualty who has stopped breathing? Remove anything that's blocking their airway. Keep their head tilted forwards as far as possible. Try to give them something to drink. Raise their legs to help with circulation. The correct answer is, remove anything that's blocking their airway. Explanation. Unblocking the casualty's airway and gently tilting their head back will help them to breathe. They'll then be in the correct position if mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is required. Don't move the casualty unless there's further danger. Question 36 of 58. You're at the scene of an incident. Someone is suffering from shock. How should you treat them? Offer them some food. Offer them a cigarette. Reassure them confidently. Give them a warm drink. The correct answer is, reassure them confidently. Explanation. If someone is suffering from shock, try to keep them warm and as comfortable as you can. Don't give them anything to eat or drink but reassure them confidently and try not to leave them alone. Question 37 of 58. There's been a collision. A motorcyclist is lying injured and unconscious. Unless it's essential, why should you not usually attempt to remove their helmet? You could scratch the helmet. 
This could result in more serious injury. They all get too cold if you do this. They might not want you to. The correct answer is, this could result in more serious injury. Explanation. When someone is injured, any movement that isn't absolutely necessary should be avoided, since it could make the injuries worse. Unless it's essential to remove a motorcyclist's helmet. It's generally safer to leave it in place. Question 38 of 58. You've broken down on a two-way road. You have a warning triangle. At least how far from your vehicle should you place the warning triangle? 5 meters, 16 feet. 100 meters, 328 feet. 25 meters, 82 feet. 45 meters, 147 feet. The correct answer is 45 meters, 147 feet. Explanation. Advance warning triangles fold flat and don't take up much room. Use one to warn other road users if your vehicle has broken down or if there has been an incident. Place it at least 45 meters 147 feet behind your vehicle or the incident on the same side of the road or verge. Place it further back if the scene is hidden by, for example, a bend, hill or dip in the road. Don't use warning triangles on motorways. Question 39 of 58. You break down on a level crossing. The lights haven't yet begun to flash. What's the first thing you should do? Stay in your car until you're told to move. Leave your vehicle and get everyone clear. Walk down the track and signal the next train. Tell drivers behind what has happened. The correct answer is, leave your vehicle and get everyone clear. Explanation. If your vehicle breaks down on a level crossing, your first priority is to get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing. Then use the railway telephone, if there is one, to tell the signal operator. If you have time before the train arrives, move the vehicle clear of the crossing, but only do this if alarm signals are not on. Question 40 of 58. Your tire bursts while you're driving. What should you do? Continue on at a normal speed. Pull on the handbrake. Pull up slowly at the side of the road. Brake as quickly as possible. The correct answer is, pull up slowly at the side of the road. Explanation. A tire bursting can lead to a loss of control, especially if you're traveling at high speed. Using the correct procedure should help you to stop the vehicle safely. Question 41 of 58. Your vehicle has a puncture on a motorway. What should you do? Switch on your hazard warning lights. Stop in your lane. Pull up on the hard shoulder. Use the emergency phone to get assistance. Drive slowly to the next service area to get assistance. Pull up on the hard shoulder. Change the wheel as quickly as possible. The correct answer is, pull up on the hard shoulder. Use the emergency phone to get assistance. Explanation. Pull up on the hard shoulder and make your way to the nearest emergency telephone to call for assistance. Don't attempt to repair your vehicle while it's on the hard shoulder. Because of the risk posed by traffic passing at high speeds. Question 42 of 58. You've stalled in the middle of a level crossing and can't restart the engine. The warning bells start to ring. What should you do? Push the vehicle clear of the crossing. Run down the track to warn the signal operator. Get out of the car and clear of the crossing. Carry on trying to restart the engine. The correct answer is, get out of the car and clear of the crossing. Explanation. Try to stay calm, especially if you have passengers with you. If you can't restart your engine before the warning bells ring, leave the vehicle and get yourself and any passengers well clear of the crossing. Question 43 of 58. You're driving on a motorway. When can you use hazard warning lights? When you're driving on the hard shoulder. When a vehicle is following too closely. When you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. When you're towing another vehicle. The correct answer is, when you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. Explanation. 
briefly using your hazard warning lights will warn the traffic traveling behind you that there's a hazard ahead. This can reduce the chance of vehicles crashing into the back of each other. Question 44 of 58. You've broken down on a motorway. When you use the emergency telephone, what will you be asked for? Your driving license details. The name of your vehicle's insurance company. Details about your vehicle. Your employer's details. The correct answer is. Details about your vehicle. Explanation. Have the correct details ready before you use the emergency telephone. The operator will need to know the details of your vehicle and its faults. For your own safety, always face the traffic when you speak on a roadside telephone. Question 45 of 58. Before driving through a tunnel, what should you do? Close your sunroof. Remove any sunglasses. Switch on your windscreen wipers. Switch off your radio. The correct answer is, remove any sunglasses. Explanation. If you're wearing sunglasses, you should remove them before driving into a tunnel. If you don't, your vision will be restricted, even in tunnels that appear to be well lit. Question 46 of 58. You're driving through a tunnel and the traffic is flowing normally. What should you do? Use rear fog lights. Use front spotlights. Use dipped headlights. Use parking lights. The correct answer is, use dipped headlights. Explanation. Before entering a tunnel, you should switch on your dipped headlights, as this will allow you to see and be seen. In many tunnels, it's a legal requirement. Don't wear sunglasses while driving in a tunnel. You may wish to tune your radio to a local channel for traffic information. Question 47 of 58. What safeguard could you take against fire risk to your vehicle? Check out any strong smell of fuel. Use fuel additives. Avoid driving with a full tank of fuel. Keep water levels above maximum. The correct answer is, check out any strong smell of fuel. Explanation. The fuel in your vehicle can be a dangerous fire hazard. If you smell fuel, check out where it's coming from. Never. Use a naked flame near the vehicle if you can smell fuel. Smoke when refueling your vehicle. Question 48 of 58. You're on the motorway. Luggage falls from your vehicle. What should you do? Stop on the motorway and switch on hazard warning lights while you pick it up. Stop at the next emergency telephone and contact the police. Pull up on the hard shoulder and wave traffic down. Walk back up the motorway to pick it up. The correct answer is, stop at the next emergency telephone and contact the police. Explanation. If any object falls onto the motorway carriageway from your vehicle, pull onto the hard shoulder near an emergency telephone and call for assistance. Don't stop on the carriageway or attempt to retrieve anything. Question 49 of 58. While you're driving, a warning light on your vehicle's instrument panel comes on. What should you do? Check out the problem quickly and safely. Continue if the engine sounds all right. Hope that it's just a temporary electrical fault. Deal with the problem when there's more time. The correct answer is, check out the problem quickly and safely. Explanation. Make sure you know what the different warning lights mean. An illuminated warning light could mean that your car is unsafe to drive. If you aren't sure about the problem, get a qualified mechanic to check it. Question 50 of 58. Your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel. What should you do? Stand in front of your vehicle to warn oncoming drivers. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Stay in your vehicle and wait for the police. The correct answer is, switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Explanation. A broken down vehicle in a tunnel can cause serious congestion and danger to other road users. If your vehicle breaks down, get help without delay. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Then go to an emergency telephone to call for help. Question 51 of 58. 
Your vehicle catches fire while driving through a tunnel. It's still drivable. What should you do? Leave it where it is. With the engine running, pull up, then walk to an emergency telephone. Drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. Park it away from the carriageway. The correct answer is, drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. Explanation, if it's possible, and you can do so without causing further danger, it may be safer to drive a vehicle that's on fire out of a tunnel. The greatest danger in a tunnel fire is smoke and suffocation. Question 52 of 58. You're in a tunnel, your vehicle is on fire and you can't drive it. What should you do? Switch on hazard warning lights. Switch off all of your lights. Stay in the vehicle and close the windows. Leave the engine running. The correct answer is, switch on hazard warning lights. Explanation, it's usually better to drive a burning vehicle out of a tunnel. If you can't do this, pull over and stop at an emergency point if possible. Switch off the engine. Use hazard warning lights and leave the vehicle immediately. Call for help from the nearest emergency point. If you have an extinguisher it may help to put out a small fire. But don't try to tackle a large one. Question 53 of 58. What should you do as you approach a long road tunnel? Put on your sunglasses and use the sun visor. Turn your headlights on to main beam. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. Chain down to a lower gear. The correct answer is, make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. Explanation on the approach to tunnels. A sign will usually show a local radio channel. This should give a warning of any incidents or congestion in the tunnel ahead. Many radios can be set to automatically pick up traffic announcements and local frequencies. If you have to tune the radio manually, don't be distracted while doing so. Incidents in tunnels can lead to serious casualties. The greatest hazard is fire. Getting an advance warning of problems could save your life and others. Question 54 of 58. Your vehicle has broken down on an automatic railway level crossing. What should you do first? Get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing. Try to push the vehicle clear of the crossing as soon as possible. Telephone your vehicle recovery service to move it. Walk along the track to give warning to any approaching trains. The correct answer is, get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing. Explanation. First, get yourself and anyone else well away from the crossing. If there's a railway telephone, use that to get instructions from the signal operator. Then, if there's time, move the vehicle clear of the crossing. Question 55 of 58. What should you carry for use in the event of a collision? Can of petrol, jump leads, fire extinguisher, road map. The correct answer is, fire extinguisher. Explanation. Various items, such as a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher, can provide invaluable help in the event of a collision or breakdown. They could even save a life. Question 56 of 58. You have a collision while your car is moving. What's the first thing you must do? Call your insurance company. Call the emergency services. Stop only if someone waves at you. Stop at the scene of the incident. The correct answer is, stop at the scene of the incident. Explanation, if you're in a collision that causes damage or injury to any other person, vehicle, animal or property, by law you must stop. Give your name, the vehicle owner's name and address, and the vehicle's registration number to anyone who has reasonable grounds for requesting them. Question 57 of 58. You're in collision with another moving vehicle. Someone is injured and your vehicle is damaged. What information should you find out? The occupation of the other driver. The destination of the other driver. The other driver's name, address and telephone number. Whether the other driver is licensed to drive. The correct answer is, the other driver's name. 
address and telephone number. Explanation. Try to keep calm and don't rush. Make sure that you've shared all the relevant details with the other driver before you leave the scene. If possible, take pictures and note the positions of all the vehicles involved. Question 58 of 58. You lose control of your car and damage a garden wall. No one is around. What must you do? Find someone in the area to tell them about it immediately. Report the incident to your insurance company when you get home. Go back to tell the house owner the next day. Report the incident to the police within 24 hours. The correct answer is, report the incident to the police within 24 hours. Explanation. If the property owner isn't available at the time, you must inform the police about the incident. This should be done as soon as possible, and in any case within 24 hours.